I'm the senior professor of graphic design here at Broward College. I've been here 23 years. And in my career, I have never seen such a change, and my career has been full of changes, um, as what we are experiencing right now. Uh, within the last six months, the AI revolution, artificial intelligence, has taken over every aspect of our lives, from mid-journey to DALI to chat GPT and the hundreds of other things that are making intelligent um, acquisition of images, text to images, um, text to, um, to text, uh, so you can chat in chat GPT and get it to write a novel for you, or make the quality of your rap song better, or ask it what the meaning of life is. Um, or if you're dietary restricted, you can ask it, um, you know, hey, what kind of foods can you make? Can I make? Give me the recipes for a, a series of dinners for me to eat as a type 2 diabetic that would be healthy for me. Give me the calorie counts and the sugar contents of all those items. And it will plot out your entire existence for the next few weeks. Steve Jobs saw this idea and he actually made back in the 1980s a video called Knowledge Navigator. And you basically sat down to your computer and this little figure comes on um, and talks to you and ask you questions. And you ask it questions. Look up this. Look up that. Write me a paper about this. Well, it's all now an absolute reality. Um, and it's happening much, much faster than you can ever imagine. For me as a graphic design teacher, what I'm going to present tonight basically shows you how you can utilize this tool. And I do use that word very carefully. I also might, might want to call it an instrument. And the reason why um, I'm concerned about what we call it is for a couple of reasons. One is, one of the fears about these things is that um, it's going to take our jobs away. Um, and I, being a photographer for over 50 years, I have seen what happens um, when jobs get taken away. I worked for the Miami Herald for 15 years. Um, I was part of the Pulitzer Prize winning team for our coverage of Hurricane Andrew. Um, and you'll see a little bit about me in my bio, et cetera. But go ahead and download this free 15 pages of the book. It has my bio. It has all my contact information. It has um, all of the links to the videos that I'm going to be presenting tonight, um, as well as the first 15 pages of what is now a 259-page long, um, uh, basically, compendium of 1,000 hours of my work with MidJourney. So the, primarily tonight, we're going to talk about MidJourney. And MidJourney is a text-to-image prompting service. Um, MidJourney, and we'll talk about how to join it, how to get involved, and how you can use it in your everyday life. Um, and specifically for both architects, and if you look at this image carefully, you'll see I've got examples in the big book of all these 20 different ways that you could use MidJourney and that I have used MidJourney to prompt out of and into existence these images. Um, now, the reason why that I go back and I and I want to, and we're going to have free lectures at the beginning of each month on Wednesday nights. I'm going to post them to my YouTube channel, Rick McCauley on YouTube. So you can look me up there. It's Rick McCauley at Gmail. If you do a Google search for me, you're going to find me all over the planet. There's probably 10 pages of everything about Rick McCauley because working for the Herald, all those pictures they're still in existence. So I'm looking at pictures back from the 80s, which is kind of crazy. Uh, pictures that I took when I do a Google search, I Google myself often. I, I do advise it for other people, see where you're, what you're doing. Um, so you can contact me and I, I want to be very accessible. My interest here at Broward College is to actually create a following where we have to face the facts. When the internet came along, people were scared. They thought they were going to lose their jobs. Things were going to go away. Yes, they did. Um, but we also lost all the people in Detroit that made automobiles um, and that moved overseas. We also lost all the coal miners or losing them, um, hopefully soon, because we don't have a need for those things anymore. There's incredible number of industries that um, over time we've had to adapt and evolve, and we really should. Uh, why is it important to adapt and evolve and innovate? And that's going to be my biggest thing tonight. Um, in my lifetime, I worked for the Miami Herald when it was a billion-dollar company. We had 14 editions of the Miami Herald that were published every single day. 
We had a helicopter waiting on the roof, 64 full-time photographers that had their own cars. We had our own gas station. We had a forest in Canada that we barged all of our paper products down to print millions of copies per day of the Miami Herald that were distributed everywhere. Today, the Miami Herald circulation is nothing in print. The, the entire Canada forest is now going back to nature. The use for print went away as soon as we invented the internet. And that's in my lifetime. Um, so today, there are three photographers. They can't jump on a helicopter and go to Mount St. Helens if it were ever to explode again, like we did, or fly along the world or have an office in, in Havana. So the Miami Herald is a little bit of a foretelling of what is happening in the world today. But instead of it being 40 years ago, for me, the internet accelerated everything. And AI, which is now really becoming aware of every everybody's doing it, yesterday Adobe announced Firefly. Take a look at Adobe Firefly and take a look at what it's doing. Embedded to all of the applications that Adobe makes will be incredible capabilities, including what I'm going to show you in mid-journey, maybe not as artistic, but based upon some ethical um, of their own property, they're not prompting uh, other artists' work as much. Um, they're, they're prompting styles. We'll talk about that. The second meeting I want to do, uh, the first one is going to be introducing to what it is, how it's made, and so you can get started doing it yourself and playing around. It'll cost you to do it right, about 30 bucks a month, but you can get on there for free, try it out, make 250 prompts. Um, you might want to download the book and actually try some of the prompts that I have in the book. Um, I'll tell you about the settings and, and kind of get you started. Um, the second part and the next one will be about ethics, and I'm going to have multiple lawyers uh, talking about copyright. I'm going to have some ethicists talk about um, you know, what we can do with the images and what we rightfully can claim as our own, um, and what we can feel good about when we go to present this to a commercial client. How viable is it to do that? Right now, law is being made, and the idea of how quick this is growing, just to give you an idea, mid-journey started seven months ago. Um, it included 11 people, privately funded by David Hogue, who um, every Wednesday, by the way, if you get on Discord, you can listen to David talk for four hours. I just got off the call tonight where he was talking about space squids and all kinds of crazy stuff. He's like a 30-year-old guy that used to work for NASA, who is a literal rocket scientist. So he had 11 guys that got together, put all their money in, it's still private. They um, did their own modeling to figure out how to make these images. And we'll talk about how that works in a minute. And in since seven months, they've made five versions of their software. And they're in a month and a half, version five just came out two weeks ago. Version six will be out in a month and a half from now. So they're going at a pace of versioning and going from extremely different things um, all the way in, in an incredible pace. They now have 14 million people on there. I don't know what kind of money they're making, and I haven't really heard what he said. My estimate's at $10 a person, 14 million people. That's some major, major freaking bank. Half of it, it goes to the engines, and um, he is always... Um, let me see if I can let people in here without... Um, he has been uh, very aware of being eco-conscious. All of his server farms are solar powered. Um, and he's definitely an ethicist and a forward-thinking person. If you, it's worth your time to get on Discord and actually just take a look at it. So let's get started. Um, and, you know, uh, so on the first slide, if you just got in, I'll go back to that at the very end as well. But there's the bit.ly link and there's also um, the QR code. So you can download the first 15 pages um, I'm going to be presenting what's on those 15 pages real quickly, so you'll get an idea. This is a little bit about me. If you want to find out my Facebook and all that kind of stuff, most of what I do post on a daily basis is on Facebook, like every day these days for the last six months. In the last six months, I've spent 750 hours creating 34,000 images um, in each of these. So that book is the product of over 1,000 hours of work. That's why I want to charge for it. Um, the workshops, I want to get other people excited about it. And I'm going to create for, so the first Wednesday of every month, I'm going to have a basic free 
thing like this. The second one, uh, beginning class that you pay 50 bucks to get into. The second one will be intermediate. So you've been using MidJourney for a while. You want to get better at doing it. And the third Wednesday or fourth Wednesday is going to be invitation only to the best and brightest minds. It would be professors. It would be um, aficionados. People are really good at this because I'm going to create curriculum both for architecture, for graphic design, and also extend the idea of AI as being something that is accessible, that it's an extension of our human creativity. It's an extension and a tool that we can use the same way Shakespeare uses the alphabet, the same way that, um, you know, Mozart used the piano, the same way that Ella Fitzgerald used her voice, and Jimi Hendrix uses his guitar. This is just a tool. What makes art is us. We are the sole proprietors of art making process because art is about intentionality. It's about choice. It's about conceptual thinking. It's a higher level way of looking at something. All of us know how to sing, but few of us do it like Ella Fitzgerald do. All of us know and have a command of the English language. Very few of us come close to writing like Shakespeare. So I'm going to rest my case on that guitar. It, you look at American Idol, you know there are people that think they can sing like Ella Fitzgerald, but I haven't heard one yet. Um, so that's the idea is that I want to start with that sort of privilege. This is also going to happen whether you want to or not. Chat GPT in the same six-month period, by the way, grew to over 100 million people. 100 million people, and it's expanding daily to they can't even keep up with it. Um, so if you haven't checked out ChatGPT and MidJourney, go do so. And I'm going to give you some resources and places that you can do it. So this is going to be the same address for the next time. Um, every time I have this meeting, it'll be at this address. Um, and then it will be closed to admitted people um, in the future ones where um, that's the free book uh, thing here. So I'm going to start with this video um, that I'm going to highly recommend also. It's in the book, all the QR codes for each one of these, if you download the book, Take a picture of the QR code and it will take you and watch this video. I'm going to play a little bit right here. Seven years ago, back in 2015, one major development in AI research was automated image captioning. Machine learning algorithms could already label objects in images, and now they learn to put those labels into natural language descriptions. And it made one group of researchers curious. What if you flipped that process around? We could do image to text. Why not try you know, doing text to image as well and see how it works? It was a more difficult task. They didn't want to retrieve existing images the way Google Search does. They wanted to generate entirely novel scenes that didn't happen in the real world. So they asked their computer model for something that it would have never seen before. Like all the school buses you've seen are yellow. But if you write the red or green school bus, would it actually try to generate something green? And it did that. <laughs> it was a 32 by 32 tiny image, and then all you could see is like a blob of something on top of something. They tried some other prompts, like a herd of elephants flying in the blue skies, a vintage photo of a cat, a toilet seat sits open in a grass field, and a bowl of bananas is on the table. <laughs> Maybe not something to hang on your wall, but the 2016 paper from those researchers showed the potential for what might become possible in the future. And, uh... The future has arrived. It is almost impossible to overstate how far the technology has come in just one year. Leaps and bounds. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's been quite dramatic. I, I don't know anyone who hasn't immediately been like, "What is this? What is happening here?" What can I say like? Dates are really good. Lino cut or wood cut. Coming up with funny pairings like Fabergé egg McMuffins. A monochromatic infographic poster about typography depicting Chinese characters. Some of the most striking images can come from prompting the model to synthesize a long list of concepts. It's kind of like a, it's having a very strange collaborator to bounce ideas off of and get unpredictable ideas back. Seven years ago. Okay, so um, this one also in that PDF that you just downloaded has the QR codes for this one as well. And there's a link at the top. So if you downloaded the PDF, put it on your desktop and you can go to the link itself. The book that I've made um, includes those 15 pages and 259 
uh, total pages in it. Um, and it will be expanded and including um, new things and new things as they come along. I do recommend if you want to get started with Mid Journey, basically the process is fairly simple, but not very intuitive. So watch this video and that will help you out. Basically, you sign on to midjourney.com. You start up your account, just create a free account, doesn't cost you anything. You go over to the, the Discord. Now, Discord is an app that you probably, in fact, all the images that I created were entirely made on my phone to give you an idea of how simple this is and just typing. And then recently I realized, you know what I can do is I can talk to it and it will type for me, won't it? Well, guess what? That's what I'm doing now. I'm doing my prompting by say, make me a green banana in uh, Salvador Dali style, um, sitting on top of an elephant's head. And I can actually get it to make that, uh, which is pretty incredible. So watch this video. Um, I also recommend that you watch this video if you get more advanced. Like, how do I craft a prompt? So prompt crafting has now become an art form. You're basically writing so the machine understands you're speaking its language and you get what you actually want out of it. Um, and then I went on to, there's an advanced guide. Um, there's Mid journey a guide. is complicated and it's ever changing. It is a limitless tool for creating any imagery that you want, but even on the latest version, a lot of the time you'll get something that's just unimaginative and downright boring. Five months ago... I okay, so that's a thing too, right? So version 4, which was only four months old, uh, gave way to version 5 two weeks ago, and all the hands got fixed. There was these memes going around like, why can't it get good hands? What's wrong with it? Can't see what hands look like, you know? Now it's all fixed. Uh, what they gave up, I think, a little bit is this idea of um, the poetry that was inside of there. If you just type the word mid-journey, it would make the most extraordinary images you never imagined possible before. All right, so other things that might help you. Um, I hugely recommend this resource, um, both on website, so it's midlibrary.io, tracked, black and white, monochrome, Baroque, all the different um, genres of art making that's possible, uh, geometric, um, every, every kind of thing. So looking at architects, I can quickly go take a look at what architects it's aware of. There's 45 of them from Buckminster Fuller to um, Victor Horta uh, to Stephen Hall. Um, it, it looks at them all. And then it plots those on what you can imagine a 5,000 um, points of axes that define what his style is, what he uses, the color palette that's used, the shapes and forms, the style of imagery. It's deconstructed it and then reconstructs it. So it can take a Salvador Dali, deconstruct every image, and then make what looks like Salvador Dali's style which is not copyrightable, by the way, just so you know. And then when you then add the prompt, so this is basically um, a way to take a look at um, what is potentially the whole history of art. So for photographers, um, here's the ones that it would be aware of. That's uh, mid midlibrary.io if you want to get some ideas. I've actually started teaching myself about uh, movements and art history that I didn't know about technical aspects of photography, for example. It understands three-point lighting. It understands God lighting. It understands all kinds of other things as well. So it's really quite extraordinary in that way. All right. There's a guy that I've become friends with on Facebook. He made this thing called Prompter. So you write a prompt and you say, I want a cooking book, line art, white mermaid and a coral reef surrounded by sea fan and starfish seashells. Then he created this thing called Batcher that then will take that idea. Come on. You can go there and then take all those ideas and then put it through every other word and add it on and make 10,000 prompts for you if you wanted to. So it can try all the different lighting, all the different artistic styles that it's aware of, and then you can start to generate. For example, um, I want to build a building and I want it to, um, to see what happens if I build a 10-story apartment building and then I said, okay, let's see, let's try every architect that ever existed. Let's take try a 10-story apartment building in downtown Manhattan and see what it generates in Frank Gehry style, Frank Lloyd Wright style, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, to me, 
you've got this ideation process that all of a sudden is making you connect things together. What have artists always done? We've always taken what's existed in the world that we're aware of, right? And mashed them together. So imagine that the Simpsons designed this apartment complex. Um, imagine that a Simpsons character designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, what would they look like? Wes Anderson, it's, avail it's aware of Wes Anderson's style and every other cinematic um, maker of images. So the potential is that you can just use this as an idea st ideation station. And here's the example that I'm going to give of paper quilling. So it not only on, this is on the, um, if you go to the um, uh, midlibrary.io Instagram page, um, you'll see the image, and this is paper quilling. It tells you the history of paper quilling, and then it takes those 10 things. So cyberpunk character, paper quilling gave this. Paper quilling tech genius girl, this one. Um, Mancoon cat, paper quilling, there you go. Bioarchitecture, paper quilling, there you go. So it's a great resource to learn about things. All right, so how do we get involved in this, and what's the process? There's two parts. Mid-journey, you go there, you join up. You join the beta, and once you join the beta, then you're going to get um, the ability. You don't pay anything yet. You go over to Discord. You can download this for your as an application, or you can go to discord.com and use it in a website browser, which is what I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, okay. When you get in there, and the reason Discord has been used um, – for chatting for gamers for a long time, you can actually share screens. You can do kind of like we're doing in Zoom, but on Discord, on your desktop, and also on your mobile phone. And what you're doing is you're going to talk to the bot right here. That's the mid-journey bot. You're going to sign in. And when you get started, you're going to go through some of some information, frequently asked questions. And then right within that, you can actually pay for your account. Um, it will offer you $10 a month. $30 a month or $60 a month. For $10 a month, you get a limited number. I think it's 250 different prompts that you can do. You'll run out of that in the night once you get started with the, how it works and get going. Um, you can do $30 a month and it gives you relaxed mode. And literally you can prompt as much as you possibly can. Each prompt takes about a minute to render. Um, but once it's rendered the four up prompt to start with, then it goes into... Um, uh, you can go into relax mode if you're paying the 30 bucks with ten dollars a month you just get you run out of stuff by the end of the month really quickly um, if you want to pay for the full year it's 24 dollars a month for a full year in advance that's what i'm doing right now so test it out for 30 bucks it's the cost of a pizza it'll be the best money you ever spent to be honest with you um to give you an idea of kind of where they went from this is a a, a large uh, uh uh llama right this is version one that's in February of 2022. That's when they first started. April, July, and then here we go, August. And this is version four in November. We're now in March, two weeks ago. Guess what? We've got version five. All right. So part of the way I work and the way that I'm going to do these workshops, the beginning one in particular, is you have two things that you get when you on mid journey site itself. So this is what I do on my phone. I go into discord on the app. Then I open up two browsers in my um, Safari on one browser. I go to um, uh, explore other people's work. So this is everybody else's work that's ever created stuff on mid journey. If you ask about that $60 a month, it's so that everything you do is private. No one else can steal it. What I can do here, though, is I can go in there, tap on those three dots, copy the prompt, and then try it myself. What I've been doing for a very long time now is looking at the best work. You can go look at the top rater, the newest work, or the hottest work. And they're all rated and kind of people like say, oh, that, that's amazing. So then you can go off and try it. So I've been trying to see what I can do with it in every field of endeavor, illustration, photography, et cetera. And that's basically what I'm what I'm doing here. You also get your own library. And I have now 34,000 images in my library alone. And now I've gone back and I've taken the prompts and copied them. And, and you can kind of see in this lo lower corner, that's the prompt to create this particular owl photograph, and uh, which is quite extensive and long and in the book, obviously. Um, and then I could copy that, the full command, go over to Discord that's on my phone, put it in. 
what I always do, if I'm going to steal something, I'm going to improve upon it. And basically what that's done is a feedback loop of extraordinary 100 million people, or I'm sorry, 14 million people working together collaboratively to see the coolest pictures you can ever produce. All right, so let's get to the good stuff and see what you can to produce. So this is what it looks like. When you're in mid-journey, you hit forward slash, and it's simply, okay, put a prompt, hit tab, and then start typing. A holographic glamour and beautiful woman with blonde long hair wearing a uh, hang er feng turquoise wedding dress. That's what it produced. And there's the whole thing. Um, so you make the description, you talk about the lighting, and then you talk about particularly the style by Carol Back and Amy Soul. I like to mix up a couple of different artists because you get some really interesting kind of things. And one of the big advantages of um, being able to get my book and the first 15 pages includes these. So this is, I'm doing a children's book right now. And that's an actual photograph of my daughter. She's now 25 years old um, and works at Sephora. If you could stop by and say hi and Davey over there. Um, that's a picture right there I've uploaded. And I said, beautiful blonde, little blonde girl Pixar children's book style. So that's the style that I'm using to do these pictures. Chaos 50. Now what chaos dash dash 50, it's a command to say, give me very big variations. It's one, zero through 50, through, through 100, right? So this is give me some variations. So that's what it gave me. So I did this like 10 times and it's 10 minutes. We're going to pass. You can put, if you're in the $30 level, you can literally prompt a hundred things and just go out to lunch, come back and they're all done. Then you pick which ones of the four you like and you could upscale them and then move on. So then I created this character. Now I can start to create a character design and there's videos about how to do that as well. So um, these are the two pictures that I used. Um, then I got these different ones and then I started to have these different looks. Um, and I sort of like the one in the top right but I kept going. So you could feed the images back in to say, keep going in this direction. And then you end up um, coming up with some ideas of what you're going to do. So there are videos about how to keep consistent characters. Basically, you design the character like the character designer would. You put on the outfits. You you put a, a knolling is the kind of term for using for that. And you decide, of course, what the story line is going to be. So the idea of this book is called Imagine, forward slash Imagine, which is also the command and what I'm calling this book. And I'm gonna create a company called Forward Slash Imagine. I love the, the song, um, is my favorite of all time. And then this idea of imagination is what I feel like all of a sudden I've been woken up about. It's exciting to see what's possible. So I prompted things like you know, a magic carpet ride, the little girl from a Disney. Uh, I actually started with children's storybook only. So this is without any Pixar reference at all. In fact, I'm thinking about ditching the Pixar reference so that it doesn't look like that style. I've tried some different painterly things, children's paint book. Um, this I asked for a black cat and it gave me the wrong cat. So this can be some Photoshop work involved in, in the um, making of these. So the idea is that, and this is true, I, we read to our kids every single night of their existence. Um, as they got a little bit older, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, complete works of both. I would make up stories and come up with things. So when she gets to sleep, her imagination is still running with whatever you were talking about. She had a birthday party. So she goes through this portal, and I'll show you the, the portal is this slide right here. This is the portal. And when she goes into the portal, she becomes this magic world. Whatever she was hearing about, um, you know, whether it be, um, in this case, a birthday party, she would then invent and have adventures with her friends. So if mom and dad said, you know, she, uh, if she said, if Laura said, hey, I'm scared of that big monster in the closet. By the time we read her story, she would then go into a world and have a birthday party for that monster. So the idea is that to take all the fears away from children, this is about potty training, but it's about hearing a story about going to outer space and you only get to launch if you're, if you're capable of potty, being potty trained, right? So if you've done a good deal, then you get to go launch into your world. So the idea is that, you know, ideas are the, the pathway to um, the other world, the other side of your imagination. And a rich imagination, if we're mediated to all the time, and we've seen Avatar, we're over mediated to what we think it's going to be. Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter have a different space if you've never seen the movies, as a, especially Lord of the Rings. Um, extraordinary as it is, we almost find out 
without imagination, we're just being spoon fed these things. So now you get to take control of it. So I said to myself, okay, how did um, George Lucas make all his money off of Star Wars? Anybody know, got the answer? 80% from merchandising. He's one of the very, very first geniuses of being a director that owned the merchandising rights to all the products, made more money than any of the movies um, and continues to since he sold it to Disney, right? So I said, okay, make a rug. So the story about the underwater world. So the prompt here is um, a child's room who loves underwater stuff, right? There you go. I made plushy dolls, like 20 different ones. I made a, a cushion couch. I made a whole bed and a scene that you could put on your wall. And I thought to myself, you know what? I could be an entrepreneur. I could be a, I could be a children's book author. I can then make furniture for that children's book. What else can I do with Mid Journey? Um, and so now I'm bringing it to the classroom. And this is where I really want to get you all involved to spread the word about this. Feel free to share that first 15 pages. Feel free to talk about this on Facebook. Um, follow me on Facebook, and I'm going to have stuff coming out every single day. I'm dedicating to my life to making this something that we take advantage of, the way that I got my first uh, Macintosh Plus, the same way that I got my, my access to the Internet. Um, I got Photoshop 1.0. I got my iPhone. These were life-changing things that all happened in my lifetime. And before them, I don't even know what I did. I did my master's thesis at a time when you had to go to the library. And you had to get them to mail the right book from another state because they didn't have that book at your library locally. Um, are we wasting our time with that? So this is Ashley Rodriguez, one of my students, and she has she's in this class called Editorial Illustration. It's called Illustration 2, and they create illustrations. So the story is a new hyper-realistic TikTok beauty filter is freaking people out. So she grabs a story from the news and makes it into an illustration. This is what Mid Journey did for her. Now, it's got two phones, and it's kind of messed up. So the idea is that it's such a beauty filter, you look so amazing, but on the other side, it's dark and kind of like it changes your self-image and stuff. So then she took this and then she just made this. Um, so, but she went through a hundred different variations to get to this point. Prompt crafting, just to let you know, I spent 750 hours to get this content of this book that's 259 pages. I'm really good at this because I've been making images for 50 years of my life professionally. So I, in fact, I guarantee you, none of you are going to be able to, to beat me at doing that or shooting photographs. This is not going to happen. I do that with my students all the time. I have a class. I go out with an iPhone. We walk around to the parking garage and I come back and I said, if you can beat the pictures I just took, I will give you an A for this class. Haven't had one yet. Why? Because I got 50 years of making it. So think about it. If you're going to complain about this being too easy, think about Photoshop. That's the same claim they had. Think about photography. If you were a painter in Paris in the 1800s, all of a sudden, everything went away. It went dark. So there were 2,000 licenses to paint portraits of people in Paris. The year photography came out, guess what? It went away. There's no such license that exists anymore because photographers could do with much more accuracy. This is life-changing. So is it going to mess up some people? Heck yeah. But if you're an illustrator already, if you've got skills in graphic design already, let's see what you can do with it. So here you go. So we have a class in branding. And one of the things I have them do is make a mission statement, make a persona group, and describe who those people are and how you're going to design to fit the needs of these desperately different people, right? Those images are not real stock photographs. Those are prompted from the description that people wrote in the in the prompt there. This is Amanda's um, project that she just delivered today, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was so amazing. I gave her a free copy of the book because I just think she's doing brilliant things. So she's making a, a love a heart, love heart cafe, right? So what's the interior look like? She's done it. What's the exterior look like? The type is messed up. That can be fixed in a couple of minutes in Photoshop, right? Uh, what's the booth look like inside? What does some of the food look like? What do the pizza look like? And then she has to, as part of her branding campaign, create an Instagram profile and manage and create a strategy for how to use Instagram. So she's got a photograph in her environment with people that are fabricated by Mid Journey. She's got desserts that are made in Mid Journey. Um, she's got croissants that are to die for. I'm ready to eat that right away, right? 
Um, and these are things that last semester they would go on Adobe stock and they download pictures and, um, and they wouldn't be right. And they'd have to fix them in Photoshop and everything. Now you prompt it what you want and it gives you what you want. So we did a Publix Kids Chef Academy. And on the right, you see uh, all I said is kids, uh, Kid Chef Academy, white background, logo, flat vector artwork, version four. This is version four. Version five came out. I haven't updated the book to be compliant with version five. It is different. Just let you warning. Um, if you try some of the prompts in the 15 pages, they may turn out different. If you put dash dash version four, they'll turn out almost exactly like it. Now, what's interesting is every time you hit redo, everything is always new. So the prompts that I'm showing in my book are basically sometimes after 20 or 30 different iterations, it seems to get better and better because it sees up four up. If you pick number one and number three, it goes in that direction deeper. So it's refining itself to your interest in certain images over others. This is just um, you know artwork that can be created. Now today, um, Adobe announced, or yesterday, a Firefly. Adobe Firefly, go check it out, definitely for sure. It's doing all of this stuff in the Adobe products you're used to using and in ways that go far beyond what MidJourney can do. But what MidJourney does, and it definitely does text for sure, as best as you can imagine. Um, what MidJourney does do that it doesn't is it has a heart and soul, and it's really built upon um, stylistically very different ideas of what um, beauty is. Um, so social media products for it, even having a bento box for the Chef's Academy. So when you come to school, you do that. So this is for a, a project for that. Uh, what's the, the project called? The City Barker? City? The Dog? Dog City. The Dog City project, they had persona groups. So they asked me to help them out. So here's what I prompted, portrait attractive 60-year-old couple and their golden retriever, studio lighting, gray background, and Lee Bewitt style, okay? And that's what it produced. That's a photograph. I'm a photographer professionally. This is version five, okay? If you want realism, if you want the correct number of fingers, use version five. Um, look at the rings on her finger and the creases in her skin. It's nailed fingers. You can't complain about that anymore. It did make some of the kids into dogs, which was a little weird. So you're going to get occasionally things. Um, this is for a different project, for a different class. And I'm helping out my students now finding ways to do this. In that Kids Academy, here's a mood board that includes color palettes for a Kids Apron Academy. Interior spaces for what a classroom might be used and made for. Um, we're using mock-ups all the time. We've done a bunch of food um, truck kind of campaigns. These are with already stuff on them. Um, T-shirts are used, and then you put the logo on top of it. You make all kinds of products. So mock-ups is a thing I've been kind of making a lot of because I can see how it could be used for graphic designers' use. I did the same food trucks exactly, but with complete white finishes. So you can add your own Photoshop uh, labels and, and um, identity systems on top of those buildings. I've been using it for illustrations for myself. Um, I've been illustrating um, a group of stuff for climate change, which is the image on the right. Um, that's going to be about well, what do we leave? We're borrowing from our children's future by destroying our earth today kind of a concept. Um, and there's some other components to that. And then my mother's um, Alzheimer's. So I actually prompted what does my mother feel like having Alzheimer's and having lost her husband um, dancing? And that's this is a version four. Can't wait to try it in version five. We'll see how that turns out. Um, it has heart. It has soul. This is somebody else's work, but I just thought it was funny. Uh, what if these things came to life? And that's a very common thing, too. Uh, what if The Simpsons were in a um, Pulp Fiction style movie, right? Sin City. Um, then it creates those kind of combinations. Um, there's a thing called knolling um, that you can see uh, created here. Um, these are a couple of um, icons. So I, I said a guitarist. This is a, a rock and roll thing. Here is a David Bowie uh, polymer 3D cover for your iPhone. Um, this is another person's work, but I did some, some things and pulled the color pal palette out of it. Um, this is for an adventure photographer. You can see the text is wrong, but two seconds in Photoshop and I can fix that. Um, I'm doing an illustration about texting and driving and there's a cemetery um, statue that's using it. Um, these are infographics about the body's interior space. Now, all the text is nonsense, but the image potentially, if you put in an exact um, contents, it can also do things like that. This is a couple of illustrations students have done in class. 
Um, this was about AI um, being entered into AI artwork being entered to a contest and winning. And then they had to give up the prize because it wasn't disclosed early on. So that story turns into an infographic after a couple of different iterations. And here is AI with a paintbrush and a palette and a first place thing. And that illustrates that story pretty well. Okay, so now let's get into some really cool stuff. Food photographers just did a presentation to the Food Photographers of America. And they are like, you know how long it would take to make that photograph? That would be like a three-day set thing involving three or four stylists and we'd be painting stuff and whatever. So what they can do, however, is they can um, put you know, parts of this that aren't quite right. They can go into Photoshop and start to work with making that even better. Um, rearranging things, composing. So there's a job in every industry for this. And you can see these are saleable images, especially if you're talking about internet, internet quality. Um, and website quality. So don't pay money for stock photography, make it yourself. Um, Adobe has um, given you the ability to sell your work as stock photography from mid journey, but you have to label it as AI produced, but people are still buying it. So a friend of mine back in December decided to make a snow skiing Santa Claus and made a thousand dollars in one month off of that one image. He had to up res it, there's Topaz filters, up software that does a spectacular job. Photoshop does okay, but um, now Adobe has got some new technology that they've just released part of Firefly. Take a look at it. Um, uh, Tammy and myself are putting together a Vogue magazine done completely AI with unimaginable photographs. Here's the, the prompt for this one. Low angle, half underwater, above photograph, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's more fashion. Uh, the one in the bottom right is a um, porcelain Dragon Harley Davidson. There you go. So the possibilities, these are prompting all kinds of artists. Um, and these are all in the book. Um, and these are just ones that I had fun creating and started going off. And there's the uh, high fashion photo, haute couture, avant-garde, extreme nature, coral sea fans, fist scales, brilliant colors, hat, dress, long hair, um, high heels, environmentally conscious photography, award-winning, right? Um, I typically put in um, Annie Leibovitz and Vogue magazine style photo shoot. I'll put photo studio lighting um, and lighting it understands, steampunk it understands. So this is futurism, dragon, organic, steampunk, neural art, film photography by Alexander McQueen, couture realistic. This is a, sh this is a shoe that um, if you're a shoemaker, you can actually go do it. Uh, it understands drone photography. So the one on the left is a woman laying down on a beach as water surrounds her wearing a wedding dress on a black sand beach in Iceland. That took me forever. I probably did a thousand prompts to get this one image that I really like that I would sell as a photograph um, at this point. I do have tons. I shoot lots of models and lots of fashion. So I'm used to this kind of thing. Um, Let's keep on going, and but you're going to get the idea that, um, so this is um, Wes Anderson movie on the right, styled a couple in surreal environment, but the Flintstones on the left. Um, architecture, okay, here we go. Um, there's a real long thing about tall skyscraper with glass sinuous curves. Uh, Zaha Hadid is mentioned there. Um, Hyper-realistic, full body, cinematic. Etc. So I've actually put people and models in the scene, and you can see the four original ones, and these are two that I picked out of that prompt. Um, I've actually gone way beyond these. I've started with version five. I'm working with the architecture department, and I'm more than happy to have um, the students from there work on with me, and we're sharing a drive to create more like how could you uh, take a prompt maybe for an actual building and then go through some ideation process. I'd love to see it being used in a full environment. There are architecture people out there already doing this and taking these visuals and turning them to 3D objects through other software that's coming out at the same time that this is. Um, Brutalist, I think, is part of the prompt in this one. Um, you know, I, I don't even remember the prompts of all these, but, you know, most expensive uh, uh, house, uh, minimalist, uh, tiered level, waterfall involved, you know, place in the Bahamas or something. Uh, this one, I, um, it was Bahamas resort on a small island, um, entirely made like a, uh, like a cruise ship looking. 
And then I put a model in there just for a sense of scale and some ideas for how that would be. Dolly bioarchitecture, that's it. That's the whole prompt. Now you keep running this and it's going to keep making more and more and more. It's an unlimited supply of iterations. Uh, then you find the one you want. So this is Frank Gehry, I think, on the left, if I'm not mistaken. And then Frank Gehry, bioarchitecture in an environmentally conscious environment, uh, desert kind of thing. So you keep adding on it, you keep iterating, and you come up with it. Being an underwater photographer for since I was 14 years old, I'm 63 now, right? Uh, this blew me away because the first time I saw so somebody else did this, and I'm like, oh, I just want to try that prompt. So I copied and pasted the prompt, and there's a friend on Facebook. So he said, yeah, sure, I'll give you the prompt. And I'm like, oh, no, this is it's all over. GoPro wide angle photo. So then I started making more and then I started making more. And I started to think, could I outdo myself as a photographer by making these images with never going somewhere? This picture of a fox, I made a 20 by 24 inch print of this that I, you can't distinguish from a real photograph. And of course, there's a, the one on the bottom right. That's a, I took a photograph of that I actually took uploaded it and the wings were in a completely stretched out position i said add mount mckinley in the background in the late evening light and that's what it made for me again a saleable image now the one on the left doesn't make any sense because water lilies don't go vertical up a wall somewhere like that the owl's pretty cool um the spanish moss was kind of a fun thing so i've actually been to yellowstone and photographed in the winter time which is spectacular if you ever get a chance to do that so i decided to make a bison picture better than the ones that i did um and then i started some more artistic interpretations so basically we're kind of getting close to the end of everything if you didn't get a chance already um, do a um, QR code there or type in that bit.ly, take a picture of the bit.ly, type it in when you get home and download a copy of this. It's uh, housed on Dropbox for you. It's the first first 15 pages of my book. Um, the full book is available for 40 bucks. Or if you join one of my classes, it's 50 bucks and you get the book for free. So pay an extra 10 bucks, come back for one of these two hour sessions in the future. I'm got, like I said, I'm going to have a beginning, an intermediate. So depending on where you are and what your needs are, um, please join that. Contact me at rickmccauley at gmail.com um, to get a hold of me. Um, and then you'll also see in this last slide all of my contact information as well. Um, so you can pay me with Zelle or you know um, any of the popular applications. Or um, you, You're welcome if you're a student to come into the classroom and participate in those. I've agreed to give to students all these things for free. Um, in exchange for having the uh, Broward College as a resource and a way to get this information out to everybody. Um, so that's what I want to do, is I want to start your imagination. I want to help you think about what you potentially can do and how we can apply this to our work on an everyday basis. It is going to change the workplace. Just like the internet did before the internet, you didn't have web designers because there was no web. You didn't have social media managers because there was no social media to manage. So there's been over a thousand jobs created since the internet's invention that did not exist before it. What I'm gonna say to you right now is gonna maybe be scary for some of you. There's gonna be 10,000 jobs that iterate off of this. This I'm gonna suggest right now, in 10, 100 years you could call me up and ask me, if this is true or not, if I'm still alive, I won't be. Um, maybe I will be. According to, to Frank Kurzweil, we're going to be 2025. We're going to live forever. Yeah, he's maybe figured out something that we have. And I want to know what that special sauce is for sure. Yeah, I'll get downloaded to the computer. And, and yeah, well, maybe that's part of it. And, that, and there's a company that will do that for about $80,000 already, including holographic. And you could talk to it. So it's using AI to replicate your thoughts and your patterns and your speech and everything. And then they scan your entire body for about 80 grand. You can live forever, literally. And then they've created a database of all your memories and all your pictures and all your stories and everything else. I actually want to do that. I want to create a website for me that will be paid up in per perpetuity, but then we won't have websites anymore. And we'll be using our Apple glasses to float around in virtual space and do all that. So um, I think this is as big, if not bigger than the invention of the internet itself and how it changes how we work and breathe. Uh, the company I created back when desktop publishing started was called Digital Renaissance. 
I do believe that in the arts, and we should be leading all change in the world because artists understand what it is to be human. It understands, um, I think, the humanity of creation, imagination. Um, I think David Hogue from Mid Journey understands that too. I hope that when people with the money get a hold of these things, they won't do what they've always done, and that is to buy your intellectual property and leave you penniless and broken as an artist. I hope that we start to celebrate the inventive spirit of creativity, and um, like uh, in the case of um, uh, of David. You know, he is doing this for fun, for the enlightenment of the human race. He is a really big thinker. If you get a chance, get on his mid-journey office hours every Wednesday at three o'clock East Coast time. Um, and it will definitely change your way of thinking. He's like a 30-something year old guy. I don't, I don't actually know how old he is. Um, and you can read about him, watch his videos, um, uh, interviews on everything from Wall Street Journal to NPR to everybody else. Um, he's been out there. Forbes did a profile about him. Um, he's definitely uh, an amazing individual. Um, now, what Adobe does with all of this is going to be very interesting because they are the maker of all these things. Um, one thing that they say they do is they're doing it ethically. All images that created with their AI products, which is based upon their own uh, documents, all their stock library of 3D objects, 2D objects, and everything else, and photographs that they sell, which is over a billion images, I believe, at this point, is what trained the AI. So it's not being trained off of other artists' work, so you can get rid of that notion. But if you go back and you watch the Vox thing, you'll understand that's not how this works in the first place. But just to be super safe and super corporate, of course, Adobe is doing it a certain way. Their images will be used, what I think is, not so much in the creative environment of creation, uh, but in the environment of um, corporate uh, work. Um, so if you need um, an interior space for an Instagram post and you need a persona, it, that's the place to go to do it. If you need to create you know, a, um, a brand uh, post that you're going to put on Instagram, instead of going to stock photography, you just create what exactly you need. Um, so that, I think, is going to work there. But if you're a creative artist like myself, I just feel free with this environment. I don't spend 25 hours a week and staying up to four o'clock in the morning because I, you know, I'm going to make money off of this. Every artistic endeavor I've ever done in my life, I've done it for me, nobody else. I ain't selling this stuff. I got 50 years of photography I could be selling. I don't want to. I want to create it for me. That's my life experience. Then I'm going to share everything I have because I think the thing for us all to do on this planet. I could retire today, I'm not gonna, because I got stuff to say and things to do and things I can do to change the world. And if I could pay it forward for all I've been blessed with, oh my God, I've been blessed with an amazing life. Um, then that's what I want to do. To me, that gives me pride in feeling that's what it is to be human, is to help everybody else out in the world, solve problems that you didn't know exist. Um, the number one thing that my dad told me when I went to work at McDonald's, he says, for the rest of your life, you have one job. Solve the problems for the people that you work for before they know they have a problem. Innovate in ways that other people don't. And then the third thing that I'm going to add to that is that we have a responsibility to make life better. We are not graphic designers. We're experienced designers. We are not architects, we're experiences building designers. And when we architect, we're architecting spaces. Um, and we're architect what it feels like. What's the air conditioning like? What's the light look like? What is the stained glass that's put there? What mood does that put us into? We're all on the same path to death at the end of our life. And while we're here, let's see how big of a thing we can do for others. In service of others is what my dad's life and what my life is all about. When you do it, you're overwhelmed with a feeling like there's a purpose to your life. So I'm not going to retire to the day I die because I got something to do and say. And this is it. So if you like this stuff, promote me. Um, get my name out there. 
tell people I'm open for speaking engagements to talk about this. Uh, the next one, I'm going to go through facts and fiction when it comes to all AI products. And I'm going to have some experts come talk about it. And I'm going to look for devil's advocate. So if you know a really good lawyer that hates AI or an artist who hates AI, bring them on because I'll debate them live on stage. So it's going to be a nice knockdown thing. I am definitely an advocate for this. The matter of fact is it's going to happen whether we allow it or to or not. The Pandora's box is open. The question is, how do we make human life better because of it? And I think David Ho has the right idea. The idea is we make it by tapping into our imagination, which is sorely lacking in a world where we're so mediated to, we don't have room to imagine our own world. When I was a kid, I roamed, I lived in Greece and Japan. That's where I grew up. My dad was in the military, right? After he did body bags in Korea for a while, then he settled to Gainesville. And so in Kansas, we were going through the gullies and making forts and every, I would go out and play in the dirt till my mom would literally ring a bell to come home at, when it was dark outside. I would make my own kite and fly on a two mile long piece of string. I would do stupid things. I would dig up a trumpet in, that I found in in, um, in Greece in a gully somewhere. Um, and, but when I got to age 40, everything was digital. Everything was mediated to me. The internet existed. Uh, in the year 2000, I was 40 years old. And I was like, I'm sitting 24 seven indoors. and I haven't been outside at all. So I went out and got scuba diving again. And so I've made 3000 dives in my life. And a 1000 of them have been in the last seven years since I got divorced. Uh, because I'm like, I got to get back to what really matters to me. So if I can be a compassionate and powerful voice for um, imagining, uh, powerful voice for um, animal um, in environmental um, consciousness raising. Um, and if I can be uh, that intelligent voice as to how to make a better life for yourself, um, that's what I'm here for. That's my purpose in life. And namaste. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, everybody. See you next time.